So the failed innovation that I'll be talking about is the Apple Newton PDA message pad. Um, it was first introduced by Apple in 1993. Um, it was kind of a forefront of the market at the time. There hadn't really been any message pad systems um, with the capacity to do what they claimed in their marketing that this was going to be able to do. Um, they kind of, I think the first thing to talk about initially in the failure is the technology was not available for the design that they wanted to use. So their design was kind of ahead of its time in 1993. They couldn't do, they were looking at this big messaging system that was going to kind of be this do it all. It could analyze your handwriting. It could take notes for you. It could send faxes. It could do a calendar. And they kind of, um, not that Apple's really failed at doing this before, but they're really thinking too big. Um, for too early. So that's what kind of led the Newton um, downhill. But before I get into more about the failure, I'll just give some more facts about how they introduced it and kind of the market at the time and a lot of things about um, the Newton. So the Newton message pad, um, really a big negative thing for people was it was 1993 um, and the message pad system they were introducing was marketed $700, um, which I mean there's nothing at the time that can do what they're claiming. There were no PDAs, no message pads. Um, so, I mean, maybe it warranted because of how big of a device it was. Um, also, they were trying to market it as a handheld device, and it was really this massive computer with all of this technology and data that they really tried to cram um, into this device that they were trying to make handheld, and they hadn't made a handheld device at this time. So that's another um, failure we see as users start to get it, the um, the specs and the technology and everything was just completely off because they had all this really modern, great technology they spent all this time developing and it wasn't translating into a handheld device. So the handwriting system that they, was kind of their big claim for people that it could translate the handwriting um, of someone into notes or into text on the device, that was just kind of a huge failure and it didn't translate anyone's handwriting well, messages were getting messed up, just systems were crashing. That was really um, the big thing. So I think their technology was not at the level they needed for this, like how robust and how huge changing of a design it was. They just didn't have things in 1993 that could do what they were trying to ask um, of this device. So that was a failure. I mean, kind of thinking too big. Um, but at the same time, I think even though the Newton overall was a failed product, um, kind of the mindset of Apple and the software that they built around it was, I mean, as we'll see, gives us the iPod, the iPad, all of their later um, handheld and just desktop and general innovations. So I think the, the Newton was introduced in 1993. Ultimately, um, they stopped selling it and they just pulled it off the market altogether um, in 1998. So it's out there for five years. Um, at this point, Apple's just getting bad reviews. Nobody wants to buy a $700, basically, notepad for $700, which was ridiculous in 1993. Um, but, you know, I think there were good things that came out of it um, because Apple, you see, when they first do the iPad, they introduced um, the Shuffle first as the iPod. So they notice that, you know, a simpler design is catchy with people. There's not as big of a price tag on it. They give you some options. You have a smaller iPod, a bigger iPod. You can have a shuffle. You can have an iPod play. Um, so I think they certainly learn from the Newton failure. Um, and I mean, the message pad industry overall does grow because we see, um, you know, the Palm, the Pilot 5000, the Philips um, Velo 500 comes out a few years after the Newton, and those are just smaller, cheaper, uh, more efficient designs, and people catch on to those because there's not a huge price tag. Um, they do what they say to do. They're not trying to really corner the industry and make this huge technology. That's just if they're marketing it as a PDA, as a message pad, they allow it to be a message pad. I think Apple was a little too big on this. Um, they're a little too bold with the Newton and they tried to ask it things that technology in 1993 uh, couldn't really do. So I mean, it was marketed to, to take notes, to store contacts, to send faxes and translating handwriting into text was this big thing that no one had heard of, was really foreign to people and Apple was saying, claiming that the Newton could do this. Um, and that was really, you know, the first thing that sent it downhill because they say it's gonna translate handwriting 
Um, it doesn't do that. And then the legitimacy of all their other claims get questioned. You have a $700 price tag on top of that, which was just huge in 1993. Um, so that's why the Newton failed ultimately. Um, I certainly don't think it was a platform software or Apple as a company failure. Um, you just, you know, you have a bad product when you first start to roll things out. But the, the software and the platform they established for Newton was very much um, what they're going off of in the future. And, you know, you see their successes with the iPad, uh, the iPod, all their desktop software. Um, everything that Apple's had to date. So I think um, the innovation of the product is a failure, but the innovation of the industry um, really evolves and learns a lot from the Apple Newton 1993 PDA message pad. Thank you.